The Blueprint 100 team is a group of professionals, professionals that are used to putting master plans together, especially regenerative master plans, and it involves people like transport planners, urban designers, policy makers, investment people, and so on. The procurement process really set the scene for, for, the, for, the, uh, for, the, for the fantastic result that we've got. Um, essentially were 12 people that were brought in, CCDU members, some of us from, from outside, and this process took place over four days. Four days to select one team from 17 complying bids. So we interv interviewed, uh, or so we took, we, we, um, we reviewed all those complying bids over one day, a Saturday. The Sunday we shortlisted it down to four. On the Monday we brought those four parties in and interviewed them. On the Tuesday we selected the preferred party and on Wednesday they were in our offices actually physically working. So that's just, just how compressed it was. And that really illustrates just how uh, focused this whole process has been. We quickly put together the team uh, which involved at a local level um, Boffa Miskell as landscape architects and urban designers, ourselves as architects and people who have been in the city for, for over 50 years now. Um, we realised there was a need for specialist skills, um, particularly events, uh, particularly buildings, sorry, like the uh, convention centre and the sports stadiums, etc. So we got Populous um, and Woods Baggett on the convention side of things. Uh, the, the, it was clear that there was an urban design overlay that really was going to be holding this whole thing together and so uh, Woods Baggett with their urban design skills and experience both in Australia and beyond really became a quite compelling and really strong part of that team and, and it's as expected, it's the way it's turned out actually, is that it's been, it's been wonderful to have those uh, that's skill and experience brought to bear. These people in CCDU were just outstanding in their, in their fields and were great to work with, really helpful. The plan came together because the council had done the draft uh, Central City Recovery Plan and that gave us a, a fantastic tool to take that and say, well, how do you actually make this happen? How do, you, how do you really give effect to that and what are the things, the interrelationships between people and buildings and space and natural features that really sort of will make people want to participate in the central city, that will make Christchurch relevant internationally and nationally, make it a, a second city that New Zealand can be proud of uh, and make it really functional as well. We didn't have to start from scratch either. The great thing for us was that the city council had been through a process for about a year or more to actually come up with a vision for the city and that had involved an extensive communication and engagement process with the community and they had this posted idea, idea which really worked well so that there were six principles that the minister and ourselves brought into right from the start you know that we wanted the new crisis to be a a compact city, a green city, a market city, a, an accessible city and a great place to live, learn, study, play and set up business and invest. We've done a lot of engagement with community and stakeholder groups. We've also read all of the share and idea um, messages, which have been fantastic for us. Christchurch City Council got the vision right. They did a wonderful job in terms of collaborating a wealth of information together. Um, and they really did set the quality and the benchmark very, very high for us to follow in terms of then locating some of those key pieces of infrastructure, key pieces of government investment, and the idea that those pieces of investment are really about regenerating, you know, used as tools to regenerate the city. One of the first things for us to do was to try and understand how Christchurch people um, work, um, how they like to um, socialise and use the city, refer back to some of the really quality aspects of the city that exist um, and have existed for uh, a long time, some of the cultural references to the way um, Ngātahu um, came and, and used and settled uh, here, the, the references to old river channels that exist um, that would have been on this plane before uh, the Avon River was, was kind of um, 
coursed into a particular to, to alignment, um, and how the street pattern and the grid actually interacts with some of those more natural pathways has created a range of different opportunities for siting um, our anchor projects within that, within that framework. We really need to be clear that we're not starting from scratch, although there's been much devastation and demolition through the city in its current context, there's actually a, a wonderful series of elements that we're building upon, and they include the, the local geography, so you're looking at the Southern Alps, the Port Hills, the Canterbury Plains. You're also looking at the Four Braided Rivers and the Avon River being the key one that really locates and historically has located the city of Christchurch in the, the location that it is today. One of the challenges that we had right from early on is that the problems with Christchurch actually were evolving and, and there before the earthquakes happened. So one of the biggest um, challenges the city was facing is that there was too much space. Huge amounts of development, you know, thousands of square metres actually of commercial office space that were unlet. And that's not a healthy city, that's actually a declining city. And it's something that it doesn't, you know, doesn't move well into the future. The city, like so many cities in New Zealand and overseas, were under, was undergoing a lot of change and there were a lot of empty buildings, a lot of buildings uh, that we wanted to keep in heritage terms, historic buildings, but the city was in need of a, an injection, if you like, of energy. We were conscious of the fact that history was against us, so uh, economic history and investment history would tell you that when you have a climatic disaster like floods, uh, economies and communities generally recover well. When you have a, a seismic disaster, uh, the, the evidence is mixed, uh, and that's obviously a function of the, the safety fears and concerns that, that people have around those sorts of things. Um, so that was one thing. The second thing was that um, uh, we had asked people to leave the central city after February the 22nd. Um, we'd also asked them to adapt to a new environment, which they have done. Christchurch has proven to be re remarkably resilient in, in that respect. Um, so we had to recreate the need to come back or the desire to come back. So for us it was about uh, not just establishing, uh, re-establishing old behaviours but also creating new ones for people. The extent of the damage is really the problem. Following the earthquakes we've lost you know hundreds of buildings. You know the identity of some of those buildings yes but we've actually got new areas to build on. The eastern areas of the city were also the worst affected, so about recognising that influence in terms of what our initiatives were to move forward and where we might do the most intervention in terms of the blueprint. I think one of the other challenges was really the multiple ownership that's involved in terms of the city centre. And if you look at a plot by plot basis, a lot of it's privately owned. It's difficult for government to make um, huge changes in these areas without having some control over the destiny of those, those parcels of land to make a cohesive city for everybody again. The blueprint is about creating certainty and confidence. Now we have the plan, people know where things are going to go, people know how the city will work and from that the private sector as well as other government agencies can start to really develop their detailed thinking around where they want to be and what they want to build around this, this city framework. So one of the really important things is to be able to give those businesses and investors coming in some certainty that they're going to be in a place where there's other high quality buildings going up, businesses coming in, there's foot traffic. So a lot of it has been around looking at the land, um, how much that land is and how we can concentrate the redevelopment in areas and have whole blocks coming forward at once uh, and so that we're not having isolated buildings and developments. So you'll see looking at the plan with the frame and then the developments and precincts and areas inside, it's been designed to do that. Part of the job for the Blueprint team was locating these anchor projects and really the idea is to optimise you know, development that would surround them but also catalyse new development and, and adjacencies that work well with these sort of uses. So things like for the convention centre, hotels, bringing hotels close back into the city centre, upping the bed count which is desperately needed in Christchurch. Um, you know, really looking at locating these anchor projects close to local amenities, so when they're needing um, the support of existing infrastructure, such as the river, um, town square, you know, the cathedral square, and how, how that will basically again be a really lively part of the city centre. 
Metro Sports down by Hagley Park. So again, connecting in the indoor-outdoor uses of that um, facility and really looking at what is the key aspects that exist already and how can we build on those to really stimulate really forward-looking investment and development. It's about the evolution of the city, so the layers that the, city's built, the city will build over time. So early on we need some early wins, but also understanding that to be truly sustainable this will take time. It could be 10, 15 years to fill the city centre up again. You know, and some of the other projects might be a 25 year horizon before we're back to something, but it won't be back to what it was before. It's actually a, few, a, a new vision for the city. No one's ever done anything like this, this scale before um, in New Zealand or probably even Australia. Um, you know, it's in, in this region it is, it is a massive project. Um, and it's not just that you're um, you're taking a, an area of a city and, and regenerating it like they, um, they do in other cities where they, they regenerate docklands or something like that. This is the heart and the core of the city. Um, if we don't get it right, it will uh, it'll affect the, the economic viability, the, what it's like to live um, and, and a, the sense of place that people will want for years to come. So it's very important. I think the outcome will speak for itself. I think we have achieved a very strong blueprint for Christchurch. I think there's a, there's a very good balance of design uh, underlain by some very strong uh, economics, financial components. There's certainly been a lot of engagement with the City Council, with Naitahu, ECAN, um, a variety of um, investors at, at a very conceptual high level. It's, it's, there's a robustness and rigour that I think really underlies and underpins the outcome that's been achieved. Yeah, the, the people of Christchurch and through the Share an Idea campaign and, and confirmed by the Council's draft annual plan asked for a, a vibrant and distinctive new city. Um, uh, this plan meets that test. So the, the frame helps redefine the way that the central city interacts in itself. It helps redefine how Christchurch will interact with its central city. So this is going to be a place to not just come to work, but to live um, through new residential possibilities and play through the increased amenities that will, will be delivered. I'd have to say as a local person working on this, it's, it's been a wonderful experience and, but an awesome responsibility. But I can honestly say when I look now at the result and what's going to be, I just think, wow, where else would you want to be? We can see one of the best western cities in the world grow out of this because it's the most devastated recent western city. It's going to receive a new convention centre, new sports centres, new government precincts, new commercial buildings, new performing arts centres, all in the space of 10 years. Our motto has sort of been not to put it back but to put it forward. So we're looking to try and make sure that what the city is uh, into, in tomorrow's terms is picking up all the good things from before and taking those forward but also adding some new structure to that which hopefully means the city's in a good shape for meeting the challenges that come to it over the next um, you know, 50, 100, 150 years. From my perspective, I, I say to people, you could have many lifetimes. This is not a once in a lifetime opportunity. You could have many, many lifetimes before you'd have the opportunity to, to be involved in designing a city. And here we have pretty much a blank canvas with a, with a lot of the, 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 the CBD um, effectively being removed due to, due to demolition. Um, so it's, it's, it is effectively a blank canvas to start again. And, and I, I just, uh, as a, in terms of a career highlight, it would, would be way above anything else I've ever done. This is the third wave of the settlement of Christchurch. We had the first wave, we had the Naitahu settlement, Waitaha, Ngāti Mamoi, then we had the colonial time and, and settlement, and now we're into the third wave. And here's a chance to build this unique city that actually is a reflection of our past and where we want to go together as a, as a, as a um, in partnership, really. And it's pretty exciting.